How's it going guys? Hope you guys are doing well. Just wanted to update you guys two weeks in using the base model M1 Mac Mini as my daily driver for casual browsing, productivity stuff, talk about some of the issues that everyone has been complaining about and if 8 gigs of RAM is sufficient for the time being and my overall user experience. Hi, my name is Ken and welcome back to the channel where we talk about filmmaking, photography, iPad Pro related content and tech. If any of these piques your interest, consider subscribing to the channel as you may learn a thing or two from these videos. If you've missed the unboxing and first impression of the M1 Mac Mini video, you can check it out in the link in the card above. With that out of the way, let's dive right in. So to the left of the table, sitting vertically is the M1 Mac Mini. I have it shifted from the previous workstation setup where the desktop sits on my right side, and I've actually saved up a lot of space with this tiny setup. Here on the M1 Mac Mini, you only have two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports, two USB-A ports, HDMI 2.0, Ethernet jack, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. That's basically all of the ports of the new M1 Mac Mini. Currently, my 29-inch ultra wide monitor, the LG 29WK600, is connected using HDMI output with a 5TB hard disk from Seagate as my main storage drive where I dump all of my past projects and files connected via USB Type-A. A 500GB SanDisk Extreme Pro SSD solid state drive via USB-C for video editing and storing projects before moving them into the main storage drive. A 3.0 USB-C hub mainly for the built-in SD and microSD card reader. This hub also includes 3 additional USB 3.0 Type-A ports and even comes with a HDMI input. Sorry I don't have a dual monitor setup. But using my external monitor for my camera, the Mac Mini is able to output two HDMI as you can see here. For audio, I'm using the 3.5mm audio jack to my custom-made speaker connected to the Edifier subwoofer. At times, I also use my Sony WH-1000XM3s for Bluetooth audio connection. Both my peripherals connected are from Logitech, the K380 keyboard is connected via Bluetooth, and my M720 triathlon mouse via USB dongle. So for an average consumer like me, these ports are actually sufficient and I don't see myself requiring to pick up the ever so popular USB-C dock for the Mac Mini that sits around 2 to 300 ringgit. I'm still trying to figure out what I actually need for my setup and I'll be sure to give you guys a final update in the coming videos when everything is sorted out. Alright, let's jump straight into the issues that everyone has been complaining about whether if it's flickering issue from the HDMI, having problems picking up the Mac Mini, mouse lagging issues or even Bluetooth issues. From the past two weeks of using the M1 Mac Mini in June 2021, running Mac OS 11.4, I've only faced a little laggy issue with my Logitech M720 Charlatan mouse, whether if I'm using Bluetooth or USB dongle. The keyboard typing experience have no issues with lag and whatsoever. However, on the mouse, I do find little hiccups and lagginess here and there. It is not a constant thing, but very so often it gets a bit distracting. I've swapped up the batteries on the M720 mouse just to eliminate the possibility of a low battery situation. So far, I've not faced any issues when waking up the Mac Mini using either the keyboard or the mouse. I have no issues with the display from the ultra wide monitor plugged in using HDMI input. The monitor is holding up so far so good at the correct aspect ratio and no weird color outputs like reported from some users. Since this monitor has a 75Hz refresh rate, I have no problems configuring it as well. If you're interested in this budget ultrawide monitor, I've made a list of videos talking specifically about the 29-inch ultrawide monitor by LG, how you can basically use it for everything from entertainment consumption, content creation, and even lightweight immersive gaming. You can check it out in the card right here. So to the more important questions, is 8 gigs of RAM sufficient for my use? To quickly answer that question, yes. Let me explain why. I'm contented with only 8 gigs of RAM that is on the M1 Mac Mini. Maybe because I'm not a power user using a lot of high memory applications. However, I do have multiple Chrome apps open at the same time with Final Cut Pro, Notion, and possibly Lightroom running in the background at the same time. I haven't really faced any lag or whatsoever. However, I do remind myself to prioritize my application management to actively close off apps that I don't require. So 8 gigs of RAM is more than enough for my use. Of course, if I had the extra cash, most probably I would consider picking up the 16 gig model as this is not upgradable in the future. So as you all know, this would have been the longest time since I used macOS as my daily driver. I've been a Windows person for a very, very long time. 
and the experience switching over was rather manageable. First thing I've got to learn is the keyboard layout. Now introducing extra keys like the control key with arrow pointing up or option key that was previously non-existent on Windows PC. The close, minimize and maximize buttons are now on the left hand side rather than the right. Learning how to screenshot is a bit different and there are a ton of shortcuts available for me to learn. In the future, I plan to make videos summarizing some of the most important and useful shortcuts to make it easier for a Windows person switching over to Mac OS. As for productivity, the level has definitely went down as I've just started to get used to all of the shortcuts and how Mac OS works. But I'm looking forward to quickly get used to it, and I've been enjoying the seamless connectivity between my entire Apple ecosystem of devices from the iPad to the iPhone. Being able to airdrop files between them makes it so easy and seamless. Copying something on the Mac mini and pasting it directly on the iPhone is also mind-blowing. And that is all for a quick update on using M1 Mac Mini as my daily driver right now. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment down below. I'll be sure to get back to you guys as soon as possible. Like the video if you actually enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. In the coming videos, I'll be talking about applications that are installed on my Mac, including Final Cut Pro used for video editing. The native support of Mac OS with Final Cut Pro was one of the main reasons why I've decided to jump ship from Adobe Premiere Pro to Final Cut Pro. This video that you're watching right now is edited on Final Cut Pro and I will talk more about it in a separate video. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to get notified each time I post a new video. As always, thank you all so so much for tuning in. I will catch you all in the next video. Stay safe, peace out, and bye-bye.